since I've introduced uh, Dr. Sudil, I'm also a business person in Uganda. Let me get the, 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 the opportunity to introduce myself after they introduce Mr. Sudil. <laughs> My name is Badrim Tege. I run a company called NFT Consult in Uganda. We uh, moved back from here 20 plus years ago. We're now in 12 East African countries, from uh, Uganda all the way down to South Africa. So it's really the opportunities for, for Africa. I always tell people that for me, I'm a African, Pan-African at heart. And we're doing that, and uh, the opportunity to grow your businesses on the continent are amazing. So we're in the right place today. Let's start the business and make sure that you network. I would like to call Honorable Thomas Taewa to come and give us a, 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 a keynote speech. Um, Honorable, I will be politely time barred, so. I'll be very polite, but I'll be time bad. Thank you, sir. Please, please come. Uh, good evening. Oh, good morning. I thought it's evening in, uh, yes. Uh, the Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, um, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Mine is just very simple. First of all, to thank Wiri and team for the great job they are doing. Uh, <laughs> secondly, just tell you about the role of Parliament, which should be very easy in facilitating you as investors. Uh, first of all, the four critical roles of parliament that are clearly defined in the constitution. And I think because we use the British system should be cross-cutting. It's legislation, representation, oversight, and appropriation. Now, when you come to investors, the two major aspects I would focus on would be on legislation and, uh, well, appropriation can be that very critical, but oversight oversight in that it protects you as investors. It protects your investments. We have to be looking at uh, how you're supported. We have to be ensuring that you're protected. And we have to be ensuring that the money you bring into the country in any form is used for the right purpose. So that's very, very critical uh, for us as parliamentarians. And that's what we are doing. Uh, on legislation, we have been able to support government in very many aspects. One of the areas which I would say uh, supports the investors directly is recently Uganda was among the countries which were uh, uh, on the greatest of ant, ant money laundering. So we had it work in overdrive mode. Within one week, we had it pass around seven amendments to our laws to comply and I'm really happy because of those amendments that we were able to make, Uganda was removed from the gray list. So if you bring your money to Uganda, you know that you're bringing it to one of the cleanest countries and one of the cleanest economies. Uh, two, passing government proposals. Some of you investors, you need the support of your governments. A very good example. Uh, Ugandan investors are tapping from the UK EF fund. So most of these projects need approval of parliament. So we as parliament, we come in very quickly to support these kind of uh, projects. A very good example being Nexus Green, that is doing a lot uh, of work in the irrigation sector. We have Lagan, that is doing a lot of work in developing Namave Park. We as a parliament, we moved expeditiously to approve all these uh, borrowing proposals and support from the UKF. So as parliament, I've come here to guarantee you that indeed would be able to do a wonderful job and we do it expeditiously so that we can facilitate your financing options. Uh, the other one would be, of course, passing the national budget. Some of these proposals come within the budget. You have also some of the, uh, uh, of, uh, you have the secretary to the treasury is here. He usually brings proposals to do with uh, tax incentives and all that. So we have to support uh, during the budgeting process. We have to ensure that indeed we do support so that investors like you are well facilitated. 
Uh, of course, parliamentary diplomacy. Parliamentary diplomacy is very critical because Uganda cannot be isolated. We tackle whatever we do from a Pan-African perspective. Because if you are saying that when you're coming to Africa, you're just coming to Uganda, then you don't know what you're missing out. You're missing out on a bigger regional market of East African community, of COMESA, and now with the African Free Continental Trade Area, it's very, very critical that as investors, you look at Africa as a whole. So part of the parliamentary diplomacy we do is through the Pan-African parliaments, the regional parliaments uh, that we do have, but also the international parliamentary groups where we have exchanges and discuss very critical aspects, aspects of regulation. A very good example, uh, we have the OACPS, that's Organization of Africa, Caribbean and Pacific uh, countries that govern the relationship we have with the EU. So if you're investing in Uganda and you want to export to the EU, how is that arrangement being done? So through the Samoa Agreement, that, was re that uh, replaced the, the Cotonou Agreement, we've been able to work very closely with the executive. Now we have a very robust framework where, we are uh, where we've concretized on how best our exports will be going to other countries in the EU, because the EU is now a very, very critical uh, market for Ugandan products, for African products, looking at us exceeding uh, one a billion euro in terms of uh, uh, trade, and for the first time, Uganda registering uh, 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 wiping off that deficit, and uh, it means that the moment we continue doing this parliamentary diplomacy, we are putting Uganda at a very critical footing with the rest of the region, and therefore the investments you bring in will be extremely secure. Finally, uh, it's on the aspect of security. As a parliament, we have to play a role to ensure that our country is secure. How do we ensure it is secure? To provide funds that can bring peace and stability to the country. To ensure that we pass laws that are going to support the government in place. To protect you as investors. To ensure that we put in place very robust laws that are protecting the investors from an aspect, because we usually talk of corruption, from an aspect of government money, public money. But private money is very critical. And I'm really happy today we have uh, 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 my sister, Kano Edith Nakarema, uh, who is from the Investors Protection Unit. Because of the kind of uh, legal regime that we've put in place, everyone is able to be protected. You bring in your money, it is well protected. And as parliament, where we find gaps, where you as investors find gaps, and you identify us, then we work very closely with the executive and we take on uh, all these roles and gaps, we ensure they are filled. Uh, we have established a very strong relationship between the executive and the legislature. And the story is very critical for any investor to find that all arms of government speak together because that's the only way you can be well facilitated as an investor. I want to thank you. Well, Honourable, you've uh, taken me unawares. You've perfect. So, um, thank you so much for for those remarks. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have members of uh, Rwanda. Where's a uh, team from the Rwanda? Please stand up so people can see you. This is an African <laughs> event. Um, uh, Kenya, from Kenya, are they in the room yet? They'll be coming, and I'll identify them when they arrive. Tanzania, please stand up, madam. So anything you want to look at Tanzania, there's somebody over there, Zanzibar, the same person, with a huge mandate. And I also saw South Sudan somewhere. South Sudan around? Yes, sir. Um, whatever you, you East Africa is, was really historically the first community. So EU is a copy of East Africa. So whatever Honorable said is really across the board. If you think about it, the EU is a copy from a, a structure that East Africa had. We had East Africa in, in the early 70s. Late 60s, Honorable? 70s, the East African community existed. So um, uh, when you see members here and you just see Uganda, they're speaking for the region.